Welcome to a world where stone walls echoed with tales of chivalry, where towering turrets held the secrets of centuries past. Today we embark on a journey into the heart of medieval life, where lords and ladies, knights and peasants played their roles in a grand tapestry of history. Get ready to don your metaphorical armor as we unravel the mysteries and splendors of life in medieval castles, where each stone has a story and every corridor whispers echoes of a bygone era. So are you ready to enter a world where every day is a celebration and every night holds the promise of adventure? Let's get started, and don't forget to let us know down in the comments what topics you'd like us to cover next. What were the living conditions like? Ah, the medieval castle life. It's not exactly the cozy picture we might have in our heads. The media in today's time will have you believe that life in a castle looked grand, but this is far from the truth. First off, don't imagine a bustling household with a dozen rooms echoing with laughter and chatter. Nope, medieval castles were more like nomadic homes. Picture the lord, lady, and entourage playing real-life Tetris, moving from court to castle, hauling their stuff with them. It's like medieval house hopping, but with way more heavy lifting. Now, regarding cleanliness, these folks need to have our modern spa day standards. But hey, they had their ways. Rubbish had its own VIP section, floors got the occasional sweep, and they even had something like medieval Febreze, rushes or floor coverings to keep things fresh. Because let's face it, nobody wants a musty castle. And the windows? Forget about your panoramic views. They were more like glorified slits, letting in just enough light to make you squint. Toilets were benches with holes. So imagine doing your business with a breeze that would make your grandma's drafty old house jealous. Now the Great Hall, that's where the real party happened. But don't imagine a chill vibe. Nope. Fires blazed in the middle, smoke swirling up through some sort of medieval ventilation system. It wasn't exactly a spa day atmosphere, but it kept them warm. Sometimes castles were the dark and dank dungeons we picture them to be where criminals and political opponents were held and routinely tortured. Nobility Clothing was their fashion statement. Picture nobles strutting around in garments crafted from the Rolls Royce of fabrics, silk, velvet, and fur. They weren't just dressing, they were making a statement. Elaborate hairstyles and bling jewelry were their way of shouting, I'm wealthy and I'm important. It was like a medieval fashion show, where every outfit was perfectly tailored, a blend of looking good and staying functional. When it comes to grub, nobles had a feast that could put modern buffets to shame. Imagine roasting meats, fish, and veggies fit for a king, or in this case, a noble. And let's not forget the fine wines and ale flowing like water. All this culinary delight wasn't served on any ordinary dinnerware, we're talking about silver and gold plates. It was dining at its finest. Now let's step into their crib. Nobles didn't just have rooms, they had mini palaces within the castle. Think spacious rooms decked out with furniture so fine you'd think it was fit for royalty. Private chambers and bathrooms were a given, adorned with tapestries and art that probably cost more than a small village. To top it off, warmth from fireplaces and a romantic glow from candles or oil lamps living the medieval dream. Entertainment was their escape just like us, but we're not talking about Xbox, we're talking about medieval shindigs. Hunting, falconry, and tournaments where knights went head-to-head -head in jousting matches were like a renaissance fair but with real stakes. Now, education. Nobles weren't just about the glitz and glam, they had brains too. Imagine being a noble, learning the ABCs and 123s and a healthy dose of history, religion, and philosophy. It wasn't just for show, education was their ticket to running their kingdoms with wisdom and making decisions brighter than a wizard. How was the architecture? Precision cut stones, innovative building techniques, and a desire for comfort nestled within those formidable walls. These castles weren't just a fortress, but symbolic and practical masterpieces, each with its unique style and purpose. Imagine a court within a castle. That's the magic of concentric castles. Its layers of buildings, walls, towers, and gatehouses form a massive complex strategically layered for defense. 
The Gothic architecture styles, divided into three phases, add an artistic touch to these medieval strongholds. As we explore the evolution of castle architecture, think about the phases they went through. From the humble Martin Valley to the grand Romanesque and Gothic styles, these castles transformed based on necessity and purpose. Imagine how a castle designed for the military might differ from one crafted for the nobility. Speaking of design, it wasn't a one-size-fits-all affair. Some castles stood tall for military defense, with imposing towers, curtain walls, and moats guarding against invaders. Others meant for the nobility embraced comfort and luxury in their design. It's not just about protection, it's about tailoring the castle to its specific role. Now picture the evolution. The castles evolved from simple wooden palisades to stone behemoths, boasting round towers and fortified gates. Consider the logistical challenges, securing water and food supplies, and maintaining a permanent defensive force. It was a strategic dance that unfolded over the centuries. Daily Life Life in a medieval castle was like a bustling community, with the lord and his family at the heart of the action. But it wasn't just them, a cast of characters making the castle tick. First up, we've got the unsung heroes, the servants. Picture young boys running around, doing everything from whipping up feasts to taking care of the horses. They slept wherever they could find a spot, putting in long hours with minimal days off and not much gold to show. It was a tough gig, but someone had to keep the castle wheels turning. The lord and his kin would chow down in the great hall, a feast fit for royalty multiple courses, a culinary spectacle. Meanwhile, the servants didn't get the fancy treatment. Bread, cheese, and veggies were their daily fuel. It's a tale of two diets in one castle. Religion played a big part too. Most castles had many churches, where the lord and fam would attend mass. It wasn't just Sundays, the chapel saw action with baptisms and weddings. A castle with its holy corner. <laughs> Imagine that! But it wasn't all solemn prayers and genuflecting. Castle life knew how to throw a party. Hunting was the Lord's version of a weekend sport, showing off skills in deep pockets. Tournaments were the medieval Olympics, showcasing nightly prowess for the Lord's entertainment. Music and dance? They were the castle's version of hitting the dance floor. Education wasn't exactly a top priority back then. But hey, the Lord's kids got some lessons. Sons learned swordplay and horseback riding and daughters learned the art of household management. And everyone tried their hand at reading and writing, a skill set not everyone in the neighborhood boasted. Entertainment Back in medieval times, life within castle walls was anything but dull. Imagine the grand halls filled with the lively tunes of minstrels and the rhythmic cadence of dancing feet. Music and dance weren't just pastimes, they were the heartbeat of the castle's existence. Lords and ladies reveled in the joyous melodies, expressing themselves and delighting in the simple pleasure of being alive. The castle is adorned with flickering candlelight as lords and ladies gather for religious celebrations and rituals. It wasn't just about paying homage to the divine. These events served as social hubs. Attending church services wasn't just a spiritual duty, but a chance to mingle, share stories, and strengthen the bonds that held the castle community together. Step into the lush gardens and outdoor spaces that were more than just aesthetically pleasing. They were fresh air in the castle routine. A haven for socializing, relaxation, and games, these green retreats embodied a sophisticated appreciation for the beauty of the natural world. The gardens weren't merely patches of green. They were the backdrops for outdoor activities, bringing nature to the doorstep of medieval life. Hunting wasn't just a sport, but a display of skill and a practical means to spice up the dinner menu. Picture the exhilaration as archers honed their precision and horsemen showcased their prowess. It wasn't just about the chase, it was a way to infuse excitement into the fabric of castle living. As daylight faded, indoor pursuits took center stage. Gather around the castle hearth for a game of backgammon, dice, or chess. These weren't mere games, they were intellectual battles and social interactions. Men and women, clergy and nobility, all coming together for a friendly bout. And hey, a bit of friendly wagering never hurt anyone, adding an extra layer of thrill to these medieval pastimes. 
So if you had a chance to live a day in the life of a medieval lord or lady, what aspect of castle living would you be most excited to experience? Please let us know in the comment section below, and remember to like and share. Also, hit the subscribe button to get notifications on the latest uploads on the channel. As always, see you in the following video.